Hi, and thank you for joining us today at Tax Talk UK, where we talk about all things tax and consider other important aspects of being self-employed, working for yourself, running your small business. So today I'm going to talk um, a little bit about um, the wholly and exclusively for business um, rule. Before I do, if I could please ask you to take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you'll easily be able to refer back to this information should you need to, as well as being able to find other information that we have available on a whole host of topics, all aimed at supporting you in your self-employment and running your small business. If I could also um, mention if you find um, a video um, helpful or the information informative, if you could please also um, take a second to like the video, this helps us to gain a better understanding on topics, um, which topics to prioritize when we're answering your questions and which the most people are finding um, useful. So thank you for that. Um, on then to wholly and exclusively. So um, we've touched on this um, throughout our videos, um, particularly those, of course, um, where we're talking about expenses that you um, that you can claim for your business. So expenses, of course, so we um, help to form our profit and loss. So we have our income, our sales, our turnover, um, all of our money in, and then we have all of our expenditure um, out that reduces that, um, that income and, and gives us our um, profit and our um, profit for tax purposes. So um, wholly and exclusively for business is the rule that applies to whether um, whether you can claim a certain expenditure. So this is going to be particularly um, important for our audience um, who, uh, of course, our videos are aimed at um, small businesses, sole traders, partnerships, um, landlords and micro entities. So, so the, the likelihood is um, very small businesses, if not um, just one person on their own, um, a very, um, very sort of small em employee um, base, um, if there is. So, so this becomes um, even more important um, for you to understand the wholly and exclusively for business um, rule because it's very easy um, to, for things to blur with um, personal. And as we've talked about in other videos, so we've talked about um, things where there will be um, a sort of shared um, shared a shared um, use of personal resources, for example, using your home for business, using your um, personal vehicle for business. And in other videos, we've explored how you claim um, a contribution towards the costs um, for that through your business. Um, but but um, we're talking about the costs that your um, business incurs and whether you can claim them. So in order to be able to claim them, they have to be um, wholly and exclusively for the purpose of the business. Um, one thing to mention is that in, unlike when paying for employees um, costs, they don't have to be um, necessary. So um, actually, just because someone's made a poor business judgment and 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 purchased something that wasn't really necessary, doesn't mean that they can't um, they can't claim it as long as it's wholly and exclusively for the purpose of the business. So that sounds really straightforward, and in some instances, um, it will be. For example, your cost of sales, your purchases, if you are. Um, and producing a or manufacturing a product or buying goods to sell those goods of course they're wholly and exclusively because you are going to be um, selling them um, if you provide a service then any um, sort of software that you need um, your sort of your, your um, office equipment um, that's like fairly easy to assess is this do I need this for the business would I buy this if I wasn't running the business and of course we always have to keep in our mind is there any personal um, use so if for example you buy a computer for your business but you use it a little bit for your personal then you do need to apportion um, that cost but the as long as the motivation was wholly and exclusively for the business purpose um, so by applying that question to say, if I wasn't um, self-employed, if I wasn't running this business, would I have made that purchase? 
yes or no, that helps. Um, that can be a really sort of good indicator of whether it's wholly and exclusively for um, business um, purposes. Um, so what the, the times that it can become a little bit um, more um, blurred is assessing when there's um, when there becomes a personal um, a personal element. So um, we may have a scenario, for example, a business trip. So we may have to um, travel to um, somewhere quite far away. Um, maybe by we might go by train. It may even be in another country, and we may have to fly um, for a business a business meeting. Now, if you are simply going to that business meeting, um, that meeting is um, is for your um, for your business. It's important for your business that you attend that meeting. Um, again, we're not talking about um, necessity, so it doesn't matter if perhaps that meeting could have been conducted by Zoom and that would have saved a lot of costs. That doesn't matter and um, because we're not looking at necessity, we're only looking at wholly and exclusively. So as long as that business meeting is, oh, it's literally the um, for the business meeting that the trip is made, then that is wholly and exclusively and all of those costs um, can be claimed. Um, let's say, for example, that um, an overseas business meeting um, and um, a couple decide um, that that both um, the that that perhaps one of the um, one of the couple is um, is um, needs to attend this business meeting, but they think, oh, I'm going to take my spouse and my partner, um, because it will be it's in a nice location, and you know we could do some sightseeing. So then that doesn't that's no longer wholly and exclusively for business. And then you have to um, consider the trip as being a personal trip, but you can separate out the amounts that are um, for the business. So, of course, the actual uh, getting yourselves to and um, to and from the location uh, would now become um, personal, most likely. But um, for example, getting um, a train from your hotel to the business meeting um, would would become would be a um, holding exclusively for the business because if the business meeting wasn't taking place that wouldn't have happened but now because you've made it into a um, like a social um, trip then uh, then the actual um, essence of the trip is no longer wholly and exclusively for um, business so this is where it can become quite difficult to um, to to ascertain so there's um there's also to add further complication incidental um, benefits are um uh, don't need to be um adjusted for so say for example um in the first scenario where the business person is going by themselves they're going on a trip overseas to a meeting um and that is all that they plan to do they're going for the meeting they need to stay because of the time and um, so they'll need a, a flight and a hotel because overseas but it's in a nice country so whilst they're there they'll they will um get to enjoy the nice country that they're in but they're not specifically going sightseeing then that would be considered um incidental it's only if you add in the um the sort of personal elements that that it, that the um business um the ex uh, wholly and exclusively for business purposes um becomes um becomes sort of compromised so say for example if you were um just by yourself um going on a um a trip to um and perhaps it was the other end of the country and you thought right well I'm going to this trip so while I'm there I'm going to actually stay a, an extra couple of days for some sightseeing then by that um by by doing that you it's then um the trip is no longer wholly and exclusively um for business so you could say for example um go to your business meeting and it's on the side on the other side of the um, country and um, there's a shop around the corner that happens to sell something that you really want to get hold of and it's only available in that area so you just you know you nip around the corner to buy that item but you're not staying any extra time your trips you wouldn't have gone there specifically to um to buy them that that would be considered incidental but if you actually decide to um extend the trip for a shopping um expedition then that becomes no longer wholly and exclusively for um for business so therefore 
it wouldn't be allowable only this only the elements that are specifically for the business so um so your actual getting them and back wouldn't um would no longer be um eligible so it's really important that you don't inadvertently um break the wholly and exclusively for business um rule but having said that there's nothing you know there's nothing wrong with if you take a if you go for a business trip and you decide to extend the stay then as long as you understand that you there's that's going to mean that most of the expenses are not wholly and exclusively for business and therefore you won't be able to claim them then by all means um you know sort of have that have that um extra time there but it's just important um that we understand um how you know how things you know how how um, sort of small um what can be seemingly small um changes to a trip can actually put a whole different um spin on it so it's really important um that we're sort of thinking of wholly and exclusively um at all all times especially when we're um sort of sole traders or working in very small businesses because that's where the um the sort of like blur can um can sort of be much easier um to inadvertently sort of step over now in a scenario where you cannot um apportion personal and business then um there the can be no um there can be no claim um so 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 again it's it's really it's really important that you sort of think think about um this when you're planning your trips and anything that you want to do um, on top or you know so sometimes um you know sort of taking your partner along um to think well that would be um that would be a nice um a nice an, a nice sort of trip puts a whole different um angle on the um on the on the expense and it no longer passes the whole in exclusively for business so hopefully this just it, gives you some things to think about um obviously you understand that in order to claim a, an expense it needs to be incurred wholly and exclusively for business meaning that the primary purpose of um whatever it, it is being claimed has to have been for the for the business and um introducing um personal elements um is very much weighted um the other way so you just do need to be really careful that, as I say, not to say don't do that, but that you understand the implications and you don't try to claim something that no longer passes the wholly and exclusively for business purposes. Um, but as I say, um, there's no accounting for necessity. So um, so poor business um, judgment um, doesn't come into into play. So just because something could have been done cheaper, as long as it is wholly and exclusively for business, it still is an allowable expense. So hopefully that um, hopefully that helps. And thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.